Hi. So I just finished Steel Rising. I sat and I thought a little bit, and I was thinking, man, I have some things I'd like to say about this game. So let's get right to it, to the tripod. Okay, so I sat my camera up here and I realized all my notes were on my phone. So here we go, we got notes. I'm a big fan of Souls-like games. I love Bloodborne, I love Dark Souls, you know, Sekiro, Elden Ring. That's my thing, I love it. And as a person that does love these games, I feel like I, I want to be fair. I want to give this game a good, uh, a, a good fair review without me being like, oh, well, it's a Souls-like, so it's just better by default. I'm going to try not to do that. If you know a lot of French history, this game might be a little more interesting to you, too, because it does involve real people from you know, French history and things that happened, but they kind of weave in, you know, their own story, and that's probably pretty interesting. And the things that I do know of French history, I recognized in the game. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. I like that. The game starts out with a pretty decent, you know, first impression. You you go right into combat pretty quickly, and at first, it's a little awkward, because especially if you just come from, like, Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Elden Ring, you you might feel like it's a little off or something, but just like with most of these games, once you understand what's happening and you realize, okay, it's not it's not bad, it's just different, or I got to get used to it. Once everything clicks, then combat it makes sense, and and then you can run around, and it gives you this feeling like, hey, I've played this game before, even though you haven't. If that makes sense. If you've played Souls-like games before. It does have also pretty decent weapon variety. Even though I think some of the weapons kind of share animations. Like you'll get a couple different heavy weapons. But the way you use them are kind of similar. Not always. You do get some, some neat little different animations. And every gun has like a special... Or a gun. Every weapon has a special ability and some of that might be like a gun where you can use your halberd and you can shoot out the end of it or you have an axe that you raise up and it creates lightning damage but then it also puts lightning on your weapon and when you hit the enemies you do uh, lightning damage also and you get straight up have guns it will use your your basically your ammunition what you have for your special abilities not every special ability uses it, but the the things that fire projectiles will. They are alchemical capsules, I believe. That's how you say it, I think. But that's that's your ammo, basically. It's at the bottom left of your screen. And some of your weapons will use three or four, or just two. But it all kind of... And you can buy more, too. Like, if you run out, you can use your anima, which is your souls, basically... To go buy more of what you need. And uh, you can usually keep a pretty good stock of them. Another thing that I think is kind of neat. That I didn't expect to be in this game. But it's kind of cool that it's there. Is that enemies can damage each other. If if an enemy is doing something. And you kind of line it up where you move. And you and you get in front of the other enemy. While that enemy is doing it. Uh, maybe it's doing frost damage. Or it's just swinging something around. It will hit the other enemy. And it can damage them. And even take them out too. I like that. I think that was pretty cool. Something that bummed me out a little bit, though, was while you do earn some cool abilities, like you can bust through walls, you can kind of double jump, kind of. It's not really a double jump, but it's like you jump up and you can burst through the air to get to places you couldn't reach before. Or you can, like, you can kind of, like, grapple hook to things and pull yourself over, is while you do earn them in the game, they don't really... You kind of only use them when you need them. You want to be able to go back. You can go back to previous locations and you can kind of freely travel around this world once it opens up. It does take a little bit to open up, but once it opens up, you can go back. But you're like, man, I really want to go back to the beginning. I know I missed something. They make it very clear. But you go back to get it and you're like, oh, I can't get there yet. And some places you just can't get to until the game wants you to. So even though you have these abilities to go back to previous locations, 
you still kind of can't do it until the game wants you to. Now, there are some rooms and some little spots where you can use these abilities to get to. Maybe find a treasure chest or, uh, you know, just something to pick up. But it kind of felt like that exploration wasn't quite there like it would be um, in some other games. Like, I wanted to be able to just travel around and use these abilities to go to other places, which you can. You can do that. But you're still limited and you can't go further back until way later. So I, I, I wish you could have taken more advantage of those abilities. And it's like if a game gives you something cool, but then the rest of the game requires that, you know, you, you it, it feels cool to have it, but you, you needed it anyway. So no matter what, you were going to get it. And if you can't go back and use it in places before, it's not as fun. But while you, you can do that, it's just... Not as fleshed out as cool as I thought it would have been, but it's still there. And it's, it's, it's not gone. You can still find some cool stuff. It's just I wish there was a little more. The game does have some beautiful locations. Um, it also has some very ugly locations. And one instance, I went to play the game and I was like, man, is, my, is there something wrong with my console that it's not loading everything properly? It looked really bad for some reason. But then it didn't kind of happen again. Uh, when the game first starts, it looks good. Later in the game, later in the game, the ga it, it, you get some really cool locations to go to, and they look nice. The sky looks really cool. The moon looks cool. One location, you get there and you just look around, and there's like, it, it, you're, it's so cool. And and the location after that is really cool. But right in the middle of the game, in the middle of the game, it, it's a little bland and. The locations don't look as good, and, and it's like a glorified maze. You you kind of go through this town, and you, you got to go a certain way, and you kind of got to backtrack a little bit, and that wasn't so great, but if you can get through that middle part, you know, it's worth it. Now, the gameplay itself is good. The combat is very satisfying, and that's what kept me coming back to this game from beginning till end. I just, I find this combat super, super satisfying, and I really enjoy it, and when you land those certain hits, it just feels good every time. Your abilities work well. Everything comes together gameplay-wise, and it's super solid. And in a game like this, where it's mostly about the the combat, that's good. And that's what keeps me playing. It, it, you know, this game does have a story, and it's not told like a Dark Souls story. This is very upfront with cutscenes, characters speaking, and there's even some spots where it almost reminds you of like, like a room where you would go in uh, like Mass Effect or something, and there's just characters everywhere, and you can go up, and you have different dialogue options, and you can say different things, kind of like an old Bioware game or something. I just wish the middle of the game had more to it. Like the beginning is solid. The ending is solid, and it's just the, the middle. I feel like this game is going to lose so, lose so many people in the middle, and that's a shame because it gets a little dialogue heavy in the middle with not a lot of good things to look at, and it might turn some people away. But if you can stick with it, it's worth it. Something Elden Ring spoiled me on, and I didn't notice it so much until I played this, is when you're out of combat, your stamina will still deplete. When you're running or zipping around, you will run out of stamina and it will overheat. Whereas in Elden Ring, when you're not in combat, you have unlimited stamina. I kind of got spoiled on that, but this game isn't open like Elden Ring is. So you're not going to really be zim zooming around as much, and you will run out of stamina, and you will run around a lot, but it's not like you're running through an open world, where you will be making some stops here and there. So... It makes sense that you don't really need the unlimited stamina, but every time mine ran out, it, I was thinking, oh man, I wish it, it did that because it would have been more convenient, but it's not that big of a deal, really. Another thing that kind of bothered me was every once in a while you would think you found a really clever hiding spot where something cool was going to be, and you, you'd run up this little thing, and it would let you get ha mostly there. And you'd be like, oh, there's a ledge there I can get to, and you just can't. You just can't get to it. And it's like an invisible wall blocking you off. And you're like, oh man, I thought I found something really cool, but it's just not there, and you're never, you're not meant to get there. 
and that kind of bummed me out. There was certain spots where you can go off and you can explore. Oh, you can go into these trees here. I didn't even know that and find something. But then, like, that's not very consistent. Like, there's some places you can go in this little hidden area and find some cool stuff. Whereas this other spot, maybe it looks like you should be able to, but you can't. It is super satisfying and very fun to find the hidden things in the world, though. Like, the chests and just the random things laying throughout the world. When you find them, it does feel good. And it's super fun to find the chest and be like, okay, what am I going to get this time? It could be anything. You can get clothing weapons, um, carriage tokens, which lets you fast travel back to your carriage from wherever you are, wherever you are, and they are very, very useful, especially in the middle of the game when you don't want to do all that. You know, it's almost like they put them there on purpose because they, they're like, hey, the middle of our game is a little bland. Let's make it at least get, uh, easier to fast travel back to the carriage so the, you know, the player can travel around easier. One major thing, well, two major things, actually, that does happen with this game is... Sometimes when your character's speaking, you can read it, but you can't hear her. Like, if you don't have subtitles on, I don't know if you'd even know she was speaking. It didn't happen a lot, but it happened enough, like, a couple times, where you see what she's saying, but she just doesn't say it. But then the next sentence that comes up, then she does speak it. Like, somehow they just forgot to put it in, or something. I'm not really sure what happened there. And it also happens with footsteps. There's a couple locations where... There might, it's not the whole location either. It might be just a few 30, 40 square feet of area where it's just like the, the, the sound cuts out. Like there's no footsteps. Everything else you can hear. It's just you hear like the running and then quiet for a while. And then you get to like a little bit down the hallway and then you hear it again. That was kind of odd. It, it happened a couple of times. So I'm not really sure what's going on with the sound. And also... Sometimes you'll be speaking to somebody, like, this one guy was standing outside, but the voice actor was clearly standing in, like, a small room, and it was, like, echoey, almost. Not terrible, but it just sounded weird. Like, you're talking to this dude outside where the sound should be kind of muffled. It's not bouncing off anything, but when you're talking to him, he sounds like he's standing in, like, a little room, <laughs> and it was kind of weird. But uh, other than that, the, the sound wasn't too bad. It was pretty decent. I'm a little bummed that it doesn't have a new game plus, though, either. Um, when, you, when you go to load your game at the end, you just get... You, you load your game, credits roll. You load the game, same credits. There is no new game plus option. I, I mean, maybe they'll give us new game plus down the line sometime. This game could use a patch. Uh, as far as I know, it hasn't got any patches since it came out, and I played it and beat it, you know, in that time where they might put a patch out sometime soon and fixes some of these little things that I'm talking about. And maybe I will go back and play it again, but I'm probably not going to play it again until they do fix some of that stuff, and they probably will. But as far as replayability goes... <laughs> I wouldn't mind playing it again, but that middle section, I don't know. And unless, maybe the second time around I, I have my bearings a little better and I know exactly where I'm going, maybe that would be better, but I really don't know if I want to go through that again. <laughs> but that might have been my fault. I'm just not good at mazes, and maybe the middle slog of a part isn't so much of a slog for other people because maybe they're able to traverse easier because they... It's just some of the, that, that one location is very samey looking. Like, it, everything kind of looks the same. And it's kind of hard to, to get to places when you don't really know where you're at. My final thoughts on the game are, it's pretty good. Um, it's probably not the best Souls-like. It's not a bad game at all. It's probably a little bit better than Mediocre. The average person may think this is like a 6 out of a 10. Whereas if you're a really big Souls-like fan, you might think this is an 8 out of a 10. You know, it's kind of hard to judge a game like this, when you, especially when I have a real deep love for these type of games. And even I can recognize that this game is not perfect. Um, it could be better with a couple of patches, but it's a it's worth playing. The $50 price tag is good, too, because you're not paying full price. You're not paying, you know, 60 bucks. It's 50 I feel like maybe... 
I think 50 is a pretty decent price. 40 seems too low. But no, they don't really sell games for $45, you know what I mean? But 50 I think, is fair. Especially if you know what you're getting into. If you're a Souls-like fan, and you just want more of that experience, this is pretty good. You'll get that. The gameplay is solid. It is satisfying, and it feels pretty good to play. I do enjoy the character you play as. Um, Aegis is her name. I enjoy being her. You know, she's just a robot, but you do have customization. You know, you, you can kind of change how she looks. You can change the hair, the face a little bit. You can even change the way her uh, her body looks. You can have, like, gold, silver, white, black, uh, and some of it has designs on it. There is a little bit of customization, but once you pick that, that's it. I didn't see any spots in the game where you can really change any of that again. All in all, I think it's a pretty decent game. Especially if you're a Soulsborne fan and you like that type of game. Definitely try it, maybe. Or just wait till it's cheaper. That's fine, too. It's it's worth playing, though. And uh, maybe just, you know, wait for a patch or something. But you don't have to wait for a patch. The game's perfectly fine the way it is right now. I'm just saying, some people, those little things might bother them more than others. All in all, I mean, if you are if you just finished Elden Ring and you're craving some more of that, that feel, you know, maybe waiting for the Lies of P to come out and you want something in between, I'm sure there's some other games like this coming out, I just can't think of them right now, but, you know, this was a pretty good one. It'll, it'll get you through for a, for a little while, so. To give it, like, a, a number score, it's weird to, it's weird for me to give a game just a number, because I feel like games are a little more complicated than that, but it is a product. It is a product that's put out, and if I had to give it a score, setting my biases of how much I love these games aside, right now, a 6.5, which isn't bad, maybe even a 7 or 7.5, if those weird vo voice things were fixed, or and like, where the sound doesn't cut out, yeah, I mean, you fix that, I know a 7 out of a 10 is kind of a cop-out. But this is a 7 out of a 10 game, really. It, it's not doing anything super unique, but it's not doing anything terribly either. It, it's kind of just, you, you get it, you know what you're getting, and you, you enjoy it. It's not a broken game, it's not a bad game, it's not an amazing game, it's a decent, decently good game. Which, to me, sounds like a 7 out of a 10. <laughs> So, if any of that sounded good to you, maybe go check out Steel Rising. And if you are the one person that watched this video, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me. And I will see you in the next one.